Tonight on Behind the Shadows, we travel to Eugene, Indiana to investigate the paranormal claims that are believed to be directly related to the dark and tragic history surrounding this small home appropriately named Willow's Weep. Built in 1890, the house known as Willow's Weep has had a very tragic history involving multiple suicides. Its most recent occupants, a married couple, both had met this very fate. When the wife died of an apparent suicide from a drug overdose, the husband was reported to have seen the ghost of his wife within the home. As the story goes, he believed that by taking his own life, he would then subject himself to the same fate as his wife in an attempt to be with her once again. The house remains unoccupied due to the most recent owner's paranormal experiences that she and her family have had while attempting to live there. She believes this home and its spirits are directly related to many injuries inflicted on her family and is convinced that something very dark in nature resides in the house that is responsible for the multiple suicides that have taken place here. And I can tell you, the last man that committed suicide here done it right here in this room. And that's the chair. That's the chair. This is his stuff, his hats, glasses, suspenders. And six years before he committed suicide, his wife committed suicide in this room. We've got shadow figures and I've got balls that just roll, randomly roll out of the chairs and Door shut, and I don't know if you've heard of Dalton Crop from Andy Psychic Kids. Mm -hmm. Well, I told him I'd seen a demon in here, and um, he said, "Well, don't say nothing." So I went out and drawed a picture, and he drawed one of what he saw, and it almost looks like this thing in here. And they say that the demon has burnt its uh, markings in the wall. I see that. And if you notice up here. Back in whenever, they had a cross here. Oh my gosh, yeah. So we just arrived here uh, in Eugene, Indiana at what is uh, called Willow's Weep uh, for our investigation here tonight uh, behind the shadows. As you can see, the weather here uh, isn't really agreeing with us. So we're continuing to cut in the middle of some kind of really crazy thunderstorm out here. After experiencing severe thunderstorms immediately upon our arrival, we had taken shelter in the shed as lightning filled the skies above us. Once this very ominous storm subsided, it's hard not to notice the dozens of fallen tree branches on the ground surrounding the house. Shortly after the storm, we were met by paranormal investigator Amy Jo to share her experiences and shed more light on this home and its unfortunate history. When we pulled up to the, the house itself, I mean, we were stuck in a pretty severe thunderstorm. I mean, right here behind us, if you can just get a, uh, a shot of this branch, that was literally just, I, I, when I watched it come down from the thunderstorm, the house next to us had a, another branch out, fall off a tree onto the back of the garage. Um, and then it just kind of died down, um, you know, almost very ominously. Uh, in time for us to get started here with our walkthrough. So uh, I know you've had a lot of experiences here before with your paranormal investigation team. Uh, I think it's time to go inside this house. So now you're, you're, you're kind of like pulled me over to the chair when we walked in here. Um, I can see there's some sort of looks like blood stains on the chair. Um, what's going on here? What's they say that um, a man killed himself, shot himself in this chair. We get the feeling that it was murder, but. He did die in his chair? 
Well, yeah, no, not actually. He shot himself in the in the chair and supposedly crawled over into the corner. Over there. But this blood is his blood. Yes. What do you think about this guy, though, she told me? That he lived in this part of the house. He would not go. He had this blocked off and he would not go in there. He was superstitious. He was superstitious about going There's in no the corners. Room. So that's, was that, that, that was where his wife was, though, right? Yeah. That's where she killed herself. Over. It's almost like maybe it scared him too. I'm thinking that. Was this an accidental over overdose? Or is this no, just a suicidal was overdose? No, you just said this is your first experience that you had. Was here. it here in this in this room? Yes. Okay, what's going on? There's seven of us in the room, and we were kind of playing around. I was a new investigator, and um, I put on this hat, and I was like, "Can you let us know you're here? You know, give us a sign." And in front of the five people that were in the room with me. The hat goes flying off my head like a frisbee, not like, almost like it was pulled and then, you know, just flies off. And I'm like, and I had all these video cameras. They had, none of them had the video cameras. Where you were sitting in the chair? I was just standing here. Where the did the hat go? Can you show that me way? the track? It went into, it went that into way. the room yes. where his wife had died. About two minutes went by and the loudest bang that you can imagine came from like right in the middle of the floor. It lifted one of the guys up, he had a bad back and he actually couldn't walk after everybody was convinced there was something under there okay. that made us go in. I'm sorry, this is, this is, yeah, this is hard for me. And there's nothing under there. Um, it was, it was freaky because that, that loud noise and then lifting us, we all pretty much took out. Now that was your first that. time in the building? That was my first okay. time. Okay. All right, Ashley, I see you got your clipboard. Okay, I know you were sitting in the car waiting for us to get done talking with Amy Jo. Um, you have seemed to have put together some of your notes here on your own. I did. Okay. Um, first of all, what immediately hits you about this house? Uh, negative energy. Negative energy. Having to do with the land immediately. Okay, so this is something that you think was here for a long time, basically? Yeah. Okay, I know when you say land, I just know from working with you before, when you say land, you mean like uh, something that has roots within right. the ground itself. Exactly. Uh, a little bit older than maybe even the house itself, right? That's what I mean by something in the land. Okay. Um, so you think something negative is here yes. in a way? Okay. Yes. Um, you ready to go inside? I am. Okay, follow me. Um, so we just walked into the first room here uh, at Willow's Weep uh, in Eugene, Indiana. Um, I want you to share some of this with me that you have written down. I mean, we, we do know uh, Dan and I from talking to the owner and talking to previous paranormal investigators here about some of the experiences that they've had. Okay. Um, so we, we just want to know um, basically what, what you can confirm um, for us. Okay, well, I think this plays a part here today, so I'm going to go back three months. Um, I've just been having a lot of dreams about mental illness, suicide, and I, I like just keep dreaming of it every night for the last three months. Then the last week, I've had dreams about coming here, and it was a huge storm, possibly a tornado. So we noticed the weather today, and it was just kind of well, freaking in me out your, a In bit. your dream, there was a storm. Yeah. Okay, so um, now the other thing that you mentioned was the suicide part of this aspect. Right. Three months ago, you started having dreams about suicides. Right. How long have we had this investigation planned for? Three months. About three months. When we pulled up here in the front window, I noticed a gentleman with long hair, glasses, kind of looked like a biker, um, and my head started to hurt really bad, and all I can taste was blood in my mouth. You want to show the chair? Yeah, come on. So this is the chair that he was shot in, and then he crawled over towards one of the exits. Either he shot himself or somebody shot him. What are you feeling? I feel like he shot himself. Do you? Yeah. That's what they think. Yeah. But there's nothing. These are his hats. These are actually, actually these are, this is his stuff. 
His suspenders are still here with his glasses. Is that his blood? It's his blood. They left the chair here. This is actually, like I said, this is only about four years ago. So the the name of the gentleman and his wife is confidential. This is obviously still a very sensitive situation here for uh, yeah, they still know, family, have family friends that are still involved here. So uh, for for those friends friends and family that may be watching this, obviously we are we are trying to keep uh, you know these uh, gentlemen and and, and misses uh, as anonymous as possible. What? Seriously? What? Why do you keep bringing me to places like this? Why can't you bring me to anywhere nice? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. This is a freaking pentagram. Yep. You picked that up immediately, didn't well, you? Well, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. How does it help? Well, I felt like the person that had moved here and, and renovated the house or built the house added and took from the land. Like the negativity, the power, the spirits. The door was already opened a little bit, but this right here completely opened the door. There was conjuring here. The freaking house is a pentagram. This makes so much sense. Are you saying that the house was built for the purpose of. To feed off the land? A spiritual yes. type. Portal, call it what you want, conjuring. This, this right here is what made this even worse than it already was. The house is a temple for the dead. Pretty much. It's a beacon. It, it brings these spirits in. And there's something here that's stronger than every one of those spirits. A not so good spirit that, they, that this person brought into this house. So I'm not surprised that they see all this stuff. So do you think that the spirit activity within the home could be a probable explanation for the suicides within the home. I do, because like I had said earlier. I think it's related. Yeah, you already have all this this strong energy, all these spirits. But like I said, there's one spirit here that is not good. Human spirit. Once human, at one time. When this house was being built, I just see this spirit being brought through, not on purpose, maybe, but he's here. And every person that would come in this house, including myself, I feel horrible. I feel negative. I feel I'm having dreams about suicide before I even got here. This house hurts people. This house brings people down, and this house will kill somebody. Another strong spirit that we have in here is a little boy. Now this one's kind of weird. He's a little boy, probably between maybe the ages of, I don't know, eight, 7 to 11, 8 to 11, something like that. And this might sound funny, but is there is there any little boys buried on this land? Well, there's a graveyard right across the street. Okay, he's he's buried here, around here. And he, this, he's in relation to this land. How long has that graveyard been there? It's been there for a long time. Very very long okay. time. Do you been. think it's been here since the time the house was built? She, she, yeah, there's gravestones since the 1800s. Okay, so we do know that the house was built for a spiritual gateway to communicate with the dead. Could it be strategically built across the street Absolutely. from the cemetery? Thick. These are the spirits that are coming in here yeah. from the cemetery? Cemetery, pentagram, already tainted land. It's a perfect storm. So, Okay, so our, our building was built in what, what year? 1890. 1890. Okay, so that's a fact. This cemetery was here before the home Willow's Week. And our theory of it being built in some sort of uh, conjuring site uh, in conjunction with this cemetery across the street is still probable. Correct? Do you feel that there's some connection here, Ashley? I do. You do? I do. All right, so uh, you guys made it here. Yeah. Very long, very long trip. Okay, so uh, obviously we're here at Willow's Week uh, in Eugene, Indiana. Uh, some of you guys know some, a little bit of the background from the location. I know, Lynn, you've done some research here uh, on the location. You, we do know that there was a couple uh, noted suicides here recently, uh, about four years ago. And uh, there's also believed to have been other suicides here previously before that. Um, so there is, uh, you know, obviously a sensitive, uh, a sensitive nature to, you know, this investigation itself. 
the suicide beats so recent these, these family members and friends are still here locally and um, you know we are going to keep any names that we know uh, to ourselves here and keep that confidential okay so there is a lot of paranormal activity that's reported here and they believe this is directly related to the suicides uh, they believe they go hand in hand at some point uh, Ashley do you want to elaborate here with what's going on just as far as I do believe that everything is tied together the suicides because of the land and because of the home and then again because of the suicides everything's hand in hand um, so uh, Without any further ado, I think we should really try to uh, put together an investigation here. Now, uh, I do want to let Lou and Lynn get in there first, uh, the first crack of it. Uh, I, just for the simple fact that this was a home where a man and a woman lived. Uh, the woman committed suicide by overdose. The man was so distraught at the time. Uh, he was believed to have been seeing her ghost. And it almost in a, in a Romeo and Juliet type of way, uh, committed suicide believing that this would leave him to the same possibility of spending an afterlife uh, with his wife okay so you know having a man and a, and a woman go in there as a team I think might be able to attract that sort of energy so uh, I do want to see what you guys can do when you get in there okay okay all right we also uh, want to mention that you know Heidi Miller is here for her third investigation with us uh, and this is probably the biggest investigation that you've done here with the Greater Western North Paranormal Society so far yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you just tell me how you feel real quick before going into a place like this? Well, I'm definitely really nervous, but I'm very excited to see what we get out of this place. Yeah, this place can definitely tell quite a story, so uh, I'm sure it's going to unfold more as the, the night progresses, but Lynn and Lou, do you guys want to get suited yeah, up? Yeah, going. Dan, right. Ashley, you guys got anything just on Just proceed with caution for tonight, everyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, do you want to elaborate thing. real proceed quick? Just, you know, I, I've overheard everyone's saying they were getting certain sort of feelings. Now, it's not the best feeling on this property in this house, so whatever you do, just proceed with caution tonight. All right. I gotta tell you I'm a little bit nervous to be yeah. here. Um, this is our first time stepping in the house? And I will tell you immediately, I normally, actually never, have I felt this way, but I'm experiencing a uh, like tightness in my chest. It's heavy. Very and, I, heavy. and I'm like, uh, like short of breath. Well, the first thing we do, when we do a, like an EVP for a session, okay. we'll ask questions. So what we're going to do really quick, we're going to do uh, an EVP burst session. We're going to record for about two, three minutes. We're both going to ask questions. And we'll play it back to see what we get. This is where the woman committed suicide. In that room right there. In that they room found right her on the floor. An overdose of drugs. drugs. I think. And then about two years later, uh, her husband shot himself in the head. In this chair right here. Oh, there it is. Oh. And if you can see, oh wow, there is still uh, blood marks. Wow, look at this letter. That's so cool. the energy that this chair that the is energy, tragic. This is like a, a huge trigger object. I mean this event took place right here. And literally like a, a piece of the crime scene is, you know, it's, like it's right there. Where it was where you can see What was that? You're upstairs. That was up. Now that's the other odd thing about this house. There's a whole upper floor that you can't get to. I mean, who builds a house where you can't get to the upper level? I mean, why would you do that? All right, let's do this, because I'm hearing stuff, and this would be first EVP session, Lynn and Lou. We're going to stand by uh, the chair where the guy committed suicide. We come here with respect for you. All we wish to do is get some answers. Maybe there's something you'd like to relay. I keep hearing a bump upstairs. Yo, I just felt something on my left arm. Does it upset you that we're here, invading your space? It was such a personal, tragic thing that happened. Was that you that just touched my left? Arm. I heard like a knock back there. That's the kitchen. 
Can you see us? No, what's, what's really horrible, I and mean, the story is literally that after the wife passed away, these, these huge doors, the man just literally closed them off. The flashlight. Look at that. The flashlight just went out. Look at that. Put brand new batteries in it. Brand new batteries. Hang on, wait, don't touch it. Oh. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Something was screwing with it. Oh, look at that. Goes again. Is that you? Get the kids in here. Get the kids in here. Bring all the stuff. Literally, uh. It's like dip. Look at that. Brand new batteries. They're just brand new batteries are in this flashlight. It's still lit up. It's it's dim though. It's weird. Well, maybe it was reacting to the story. What I was about to say is that the gentleman, after his wife passed away, committed suicide, literally closed down these huge doors and stayed on the smaller part of the house, never coming over here. Look at right? That. Uh, that's... So just imagine that closing off a whole part of your house and never living in it because you were, you're seeing your wife, you're seeing the stories that he's seeing her as a ghost. And I mean, I have to imagine that it would drive you mad to see someone who you love committing suicide and see them in, in a spirit form. Let's, no, listen to this? Yeah, sure, let's, let's listen, listen to it. Back. After you say tragic, yep, yep. you hear a woman's voice. Yep, I heard that. Yeah, that's a woman's voice. Yep. Here, I'll play it for you, the camera. After, she, after no. Lynn says the word tragic. Invading your space. It was such a personal, tragic thing that happened. Tragic thing that happened. Tragic thing that happened. Tragic thing that happened. Hear that? That's cool. Yeah, it was a tragedy. Can you see us? This one. Can you see that? Now, what's, what's really horrible in the story mm -hmm. is literally that after the wife passed away, these, these two doors, the man just literally closed off. The flashlight. Look at that. The flashlight just went out. Look at that. As soon as I said flashlight on the recorder, I went back down again. Did you get that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think we should uh, uh, put the obelisk on and see what we... Well, obviously, we have activity going on right now. I mean, we have two possibles. They have to be cleaned up, of course. And this thing has been going on and off the whole time. Yep. Brand new batteries. Um, what I would actually like to do with you one, we're going to use that, correct? Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. go in the room where the wife committed suicide. Okay. Let's leave this out here, okay? And we'll do an EVP session with that as well. Okay. That's, that's screwed on tight. I, I, I brought that to use. I didn't, I'm not trying right. to, I didn't like unscrew right. it in. Wait, well, it's, it's isn't that the click on too. and off? That's not the turn one, is it? That's a clip one. Yeah, that makes it even yeah. screwier. Yeah, and and, yeah, the, and the fact, down, that's, that's yeah. inside, that's inside the mechanism because it should be either going on or off. I mean, it's just going dim. And I'm not going to lie to you. There's energy here. Like, I'm like jittery. You know it's what I mean? Palpable. I you can. I never get like this. Story, yes. I was trying to tell the story. You can. <laughs> oh, my head, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like no, jumping. No. <laughs> you Seriously? Can feel I think, they, I think yeah. what I think what's happening, I mean, this, this just came through. The story, and I think what they want is for their story to be told. Right.
Well, when we were in here earlier, I had the obelisk on. It said, the first thing it said when we were in here, it said care. So I think like she does want that feeling of understanding and care. Right. I turn the obelisk on. So, the woman that killed herself in this room, are you here with us? Just want to talk. We just want to help you. Can you give us a sign you're here? We're here to listen. Did you hear that breathing? I'm sorry. Did you hear breathing again? Can you tell us how you felt when you committed suicide? Did you feel alone? Was it in the moment? Yeah. Human. 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 Come out of the closet. Come on. Is that you making that noise? Oh. Oh. Come closer, come on. Yeah, we're all in here. You got our attention. Loving. Loving. Are you here with us? Down. Down. Down under. Down under. under we, got, we got under when we were in here last time. That's... What is your name? Yeah. Whoa. What the? Is that you walking? Holy oh shit. Oh my god. Please tell me you got that. Enough. Enough. Amy Jo. You ready to go inside? Yes. Okay. Uh, Jason has brought a newer piece of equipment here with us to try to use out here tonight at Will Willow's Weep. Uh, do you want to just kind of bring us up to speed on what we're going to be doing in here? Yeah, it's a new program that was just released. It's called the Alice Program. It's actually brand new. It just came out on the market maybe a month, month and a half ago. So not too many people even have this yet. Uh, it works a lot like the Obelisk where they can manipulate it, make it say different words, phrases, full sentences. Full sentences. Yeah, they can say complete sentences, the whole nine yards, so it'll be okay. cool to see what we can get off of. Now you're explaining to me about this being sort of like an obvious, but pretty much like an obvious, uh, obvious on steroids. This thing can talk in full sentences? Yeah, it can say full sentences and question marks, punctuation marks, I mean it can... Alright, so it can really do let's, it let's see what this thing's got, let's see if we can actually use this to communicate with uh, the spirits that you've been encountering here, Amy Jo, um, here right. at Willow's Week. Let's fire it up. Is this recording right now? 
Just going? It's, it's on, yeah. Just okay, so uh, we are looking to try to communicate with this gentleman. Uh, if you are still here in this chair. Now, do you know that people have seen you within the... Okay, do you guys didn't feel that? I felt it. I did. Been, that wasn't one of you guys? When I was here. That was a huge bang directly yeah. under my feet. That thing hit under my feet. I, I felt it hit And pushed my up. Yeah. Oh, I definitely I heard it. I felt it here. It was so light. No, time. that was tough. Can I you do that again, good. please? No, that happened. Huge. Cool. Did you just say it was a huge one? Can you do that again? Is that your hat? Okay. That double. We actually got demon here last time. <laughs> we were doing this with the obelisk. Okay. Is there something here that would like to present itself? So that's really creepy uh, for sure that that's actually coming out through your equipment here, Jay. Sure. Um, especially because, you know, there is people that do believe there is something pretty dark here. Chest. <laughs> below. Below. The darkness is below. I think that that's what it means, that it's below us. Everything's coming from below. Like when the bang came, it was from below. Raid. It says chest below, like like it's some sort of like treasure hunt, right? Yeah. Well, there's there, there's bodies in there. There is. There's a family plot buried right over there. Under the house. Under the house. Yeah, she said she thought there was a child buried here. Yeah, and she's convincing. Right back there. Ashley did say that during her walkthrough of the location. She said that she believes there's a child buried on the grounds. No, I didn't. Family plot. I didn't know anything there. about it, so I'm just. Saying, I didn't know, you know she possibly. didn't tell you about that. Yeah, there's a family. So you do know for a fact that there is yeah, there's a boy? Well, just like Ashley said there was? Yeah, I don't know if it was a boy, I just know a family. So I don't okay. know boy, girl. So um, obviously uh, we, we only want to communicate with any human spirits that are here. Um, if there is uh, a family that is uh, here because they are buried underneath the house, uh, is there a little boy that would like to come forward from that family? What are we standing above? Oh, family plot. Oh my gosh. Family. Oh my gosh. All right. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. Thank you very much. Take the hat off. Is, that's it, is the family that's below us the ones that are knocking on the bottom of the floor? Are you trying to make us be aware that you're here? Pendulum to try to get some uh, questions okay. answered. Also, with, along with the pendulum, we have two K2 meters here on the table. Uh, you can also communicate with us that way by touching one of the devices on the table so we know you're here with us. Ready? Yep. Alright. If you're here. I'm going to get down here. I'll put it on the table. You're supposed to put elbows on the table so you can't influence in any way. Okay. Alright, um, Dan, you think of a question. Let me get it nice and steady. Why well, did you have to think of it? I'd yeah. like to ask it out loud. Um, if it goes this way, if it starts moving, it, it, to me, I, I take it as yes. If it just stays still, it's no. Alright? Okay, starting now. Be very careful with these. Okay. If you are in charge here, make the pendulum move that she's holding on to, or turn on one of our lights on her. And as you can see, I'm complete, my arm is on the table completely still. That's another question. Did you kill yourself here? Okay, asking another question. 
Is this bad man to blame for the bad things that happen in this house? Holy shit. Do you see this? Mm-hmm. How old is this guy? Is he very old? Look at that thing. This is crazy. <gasps> what was that? Dude, I can hear him breathing. Sit in the chair breathing. Alright, I'm going to end the pendulum session and I'm closing it. No more further uh, communication from this. Throughout the team's investigation of Willow's Weep, we believe to have been able to communicate with some of the known spirits within this home. From the man that committed suicide in the chair and his wife who had also committed suicide here, to the evidence that points of a family burial that is believed to be underneath the house. Does the fact that this house was built in the shape of a pentagram have anything to do with its paranormal activity? Or does the activity stem directly from the multiple deaths that have taken place here? And do those deaths begin with a family burial plot underneath the home? Only one thing is for sure. There is something very strange going on in Eugene, Indiana. <laughs>